And welcome back. We're talking with Jesse Alberto, the Director of Antiquities for Gen 6 Productions, along with Stephen Quayle, Stephen's website, and uh, Jesse's gen6.com, linked up at coasttocoastam.com. Jesse, is it conceivable, is it possible that these entities may be the fallen angels that the Bible talks about? <laughs> you know, George, um, in, in my um, estimation, I believe exactly that this is who they are. I believe exactly that this is who we're dealing with. I believe that, that um, these are the fallen angels that are spoken of in the Bible that have continuously um, repackaged their identity to create confusion and to um, lead people in every which direction than what or where the Bible would lead us towards. And that direction is towards, you know, a, a loving, merciful God who sits on the throne in heaven. I believe that it, I believe that just as um, you have mentioned, I believe that these are the entities that are made reference throughout, not just in the Genesis 6, not just in the chapter or in the book of Genesis chapter 6, but um, there there is a myriad and a plethora of examples where these entities are made reference to. And that's where I get my main conclusions as to when you asked earlier, um, what, uh, what, what do you believe these um, entities, uh, what, what do you believe that these artifacts were made for? Because if you really look at it, they're everywhere, not just here in Mexico, they're all over the world. And the purpose of, 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 of an artifact or, or a stone temple or an altar um, in the Bible, whether whether we're talking about um, whether we talk, we're talking about the people who wholeheartedly followed the God of the Bible, or the people who wholeheartedly followed the fallen angels in 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 the in in the former, in reference of Baal, Molech, or any other type of deity. Um, whenever there was a stone type like a structure um, erected by um, by either follower. Um, whether it was the good or the bad, um, this, this, these types of stone structures um, were called um, were called uh, 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 like, for example, every, um, every time Jacob or any of the fathers of the faith, um, Abraham, Isaac, or Jacob had an encounter with God, they would erect, they would erect a pillar of stones because that was the place and the location that the natural made contact with the supernatural. And I believe that that's what these artifacts are for. I believe that, I, I believe that these entities established them from, from, from the very beginning to cover the, the, the entirety of what we know, um, this planet, so that they can have a, a reference, um, a refer, reference points of contact. Now, this terminology that I use, a reference point of contact, um, it is, is, um, is also connected to how um, occult practices, witches, sorcerers, and warlocks move. So, yes, I believe, to answer your question, uh, George, I believe that these are the fallen angels that are made reference in the Bible and just how the Bible um, um, warns anybody who reads it with an open mind and an open heart. Um, it, it, it does tell, it does warn us in, in many instances um, that, that they will return, that they will be back. And I believe that one of the reasons why, um, like, for example, for example, George, I know that you, you know this and your listeners know this, and I'm going to mention this so that, so that we can connect the dots. Um, these fallen angels have recreated their identity in different ways, different forms, whether we're talking about the Aztec, the Toltec, the Mayan, the Greek, um, uh, the Greek pantheon, whether we're talking about the Titans, so on, et cetera. Um, these entities um, are connected to everything that's happening right now. For example, uh, the, new COVID, the new COVID variant, it's named Eris. Eris is a Greek, an ancient Greek deity who is the god of war that stands for strife, chaos, discord, oh, and geez. destruction. Yes, and I believe that, and, and, and this is connected to, to their sorcery and to their witchcraft, George, because, you know, the, the, the government is releasing this, COVID, this new COVID variant that's called Eris, E-R-I-S, who is this Greek deity goddess, and, and um, 
the reason why they're doing it is because it, 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 it's a it's a tribute to to this to this fallen angel who has masqueraded itself and reconstructed its image to deceive the people. But when stuff like this is released, George, it gives them more power. And 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 if you take it, and if you notice that not far into the future, um, with with these with these reptilian um, ruling overlords are attempting to implement, and I know this is something that that the people can connect and relate to also as well as I myself do, is that um, it is is that they're they they have begin they have began construction of these of, of these um, concentrate developing and constructing these, these concentration camps that that they're calling smart cities to, to push everybody in a corner and 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 take everyone's freedom so they don't get to move around now when I when I think about what they want to do here George I in in my in my estimation what I believe the reason why I believe that they're doing this is because um, just like the Bible says that that these entities will come back. The Bible says that, that as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. And you see, we don't know what that's going to look like. It's, it, it, what, however, that people may have pictured it in their minds, it's, it's, it goes way beyond that. I don't think any I don't think any one of us really truly understands the type of evil that's going to be released upon us, and and in the process of them cornering us in in these smart cities. In these smart city concentration camps, I believe that they're doing it for 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 a portion of the offspring of these fallen angels, so that so so that the the once Nephilim who roamed here upon the earth can get to roam in the areas where the people are no longer. Well, it did. It didn't work the first time for these fallen angels, so this is their second attempt. Do you think they think it's going to work this time? No, it's not going to work. But um, but it's it's not going to work because it's already written. It's it's already written in the scriptures how it's going to end, you know. But I, but there is a lot of people who there 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 is a lot of people who who will you know fall victim to this type of evil, dark, wicked, nefarious schemes. And um, at this point, uh, George, um, I, I can tell you myself that I've had encounters with these entities um, after. After the fact that I had these artifacts in my possession, and um, and the only the, the only thing that I can say based upon my experiences or my experience, I have experienced it a couple of times. But the the first time I experienced it was the more intense time than any of the other times. And I will say that when one of these entities. Um, is stands in our presence, our body completely shuts down, our nervous system completely shuts down. We're not we're not capable of of handling the, the type of power that they carry within our own strength, and um, and and we we need supernatural assistance from God to protect us and to keep us from what these entities are preparing not only not only what they are doing now because it's happening all over the place i mean it's evident nothing gets better everything is continuing to increase i believe also myself that what happened in in maui was was uh was uh, um, a, a sacrificial offering to these entities because the more that the more that strife the more that there's discord the more that there's hatred being released from the hearts and the minds of the people, the more that this confusion continues to extend is the more ground that these entities are able to operate. And I do believe wholeheartedly, George, that the only way that we will, the only way, I know this for a fact, that the only way that we will be able to stand against this type of um, evil is if we cover ourselves in the blood of Jesus Christ. Where, Where is the entity called Lucifer, Jesse? Lucifer is roaming the earth, according to according to the Bible, according to to what the the Bible reveals to us. Lucifer roams to and fro throughout the earth, um, seeking for people, seeking for souls whom he whom he may devour. 
and I believe that these and I and I I don't just I believe wholeheartedly that these entities are in assistance to him. There's been a lot of people who say, how can Lucifer and his and his minions and his fallen angels be structured, and how can they be organized? They you know they're the representation and the epitome of evil and hate, and evil and hate can cannot stand in unity. Well, it, well, evil and hate. Have a common have a common goal and a, and a common cause, which they all know that at the end they will reach their destruction, and they're doing everything in their power, and that means them uniting so that they can try to carry out the impossible, which they will not do. They're more deceived than anybody or anything else walking on the face of the earth, thinking that they could stand against the one true God who sits on the throne in heaven. Let's take some calls for you, Daniel in Panama City, Florida, to get us started. Go ahead, Dan. Hi there, George. Thank you so much. Remembering from the old AM 1430 days, I love how you've marketed yourself. Oh, yes. Um, and Jesse, I really like this content and the subject matter. Um, the comment about Maui, those the, the town is close together. I lived there for 15 years, and they are maybe consumed with a little bit of licentiousness and uh, clinging to physical possessions, um, but it's just tragic. Uh, natural disaster could have happened, but I'd like to evoke the power of the God that, uh, whose peace surpasses all understanding and remind people to check in with Romans 12 in the Bible and help get centered so we don't succumb to these evil forces. And they are out there. Um, but I like these these uh, items that you found. You lost five of them, you said. And I wondered yeah. if you'd be able to explain in the most detail possible any imagery or graphics, uh, like body bodily positions or anything that looks like a chimeric being, like say the Egyptians had the, the wolf head looking beings. And if you think these people are these descriptions, the people that made them are uh, with the evil forces that would like to procrastinate things on earth and perpetuate it so they can spend more time here where prophecy needs to be fulfilled, are they on the good or evil? and describe them in as much detail as possible. Thank you, George, and thank you so much, Jesse. Thank you, Daniel. Okay. Okay, well, um, that's a good answer. That's a good question. And um, I will say that uh, anything or anyone who has been associated um, with with uh, the construction and the developing of these types of artifacts is not good. Um, none, nothing nothing that, that these artifacts bring is is meant or marked for good, and there is um, a symbol on there, there. There's many symbols that that are throughout these artifacts. But if 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 I was to um, focus on one, um, I, I would focus on this seemingly quiet but yet ominous and inconspicuous symbol that tends to subtly make its mark, and it leaves a huge impression not only. Um, not only can the symbol be seen on the majority of the artifacts that I have discovered um, through all my expeditions in Mexico, but the same symbol, I've also traced it and tracked it, um, engraved on ancient artifacts and around megalithic structures and temples throughout the whole world, um, including some that date back to the first and second Chinese dynasties, to the Genghis Khan era, um, and even... Um, and, and, and even extending itself to the most popular and the widely recognized hieroglyphs that the whole world is familiar and aware of um, in Egyptian iconography, like the Ben Ben Stone, and all across the Middle East of the Phoenicians religious temples of Baal Tanit and Asherah worship in Sidona. And um, this symbol is is like I said, it's it's an extremely quiet symbol that's on these artifacts. Like the reason why I just mentioned the Egyptian Ben Ben Stone. Is because I want to I want to give the people a picture and an understanding that I'm not just trying to promote my work and I'm and I'm just heavily just trying to push what the work that we're doing. So I, I believe that it's extremely important for me to use outside examples to to back up the evidence that I have presented to the people right now at this moment. And if you take a look at the at the Egyptian Ben Ben stone, the symbol that I make reference to is um on on one of the on one of the sides of this of this particular ancient stone that's um in in uh the egyptian museum is a, is a simple dot within a circle that i call the orb within the orb 
And if we all know that, that, that the majority of the sightings that, that we are witnessing and testifying to all around the world is of an orb. And if you take a look at the Ben Ben stone um, on top of on, on top of this 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 quiet, inconspicuous dot like circle uh, expands some um, some angel wings over this orb, indicating that the essence and the true nature of an orb is that of an angel. Um, and like I was saying earlier, um, that it's necessary that it's necessary for, for these entities to scatter um, uh, not only the artifacts, but the symbols, just like um, your listener made mention of right now, George, um, in, 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 the, in the aspect that these entities operate through frequency and structure. And this not only are the artifacts a point of contact, but this, this, um, this symbol is a point of frequency to their manifestations. And this symbol, like, as I said, this symbol, I have tracked it into every ancient culture worldwide. There hasn't been one place that I have not ran across this symbol. And even closer to home, in the Four Corners region of the United States, well, closer to you guys, because I'm here in Mexico, George, but closer to you guys in the U.S., it would have been by a prehistoric and extinct indigenous people who were known as the Anasazi. Um, they even used this symbol as the shape of uh, their temples and altars, what they called kiva. The kivas were perfect, massive circles that were built in, into the earth for the purpose of what I just mentioned, magic rituals and ceremonial religious practices that were used extensively by the Anasazi to illegally access the spirit realm. And extending itself from the ancient with it, this symbol, this, and I'm, I'm going to connect the symbol in, 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 into what's happening right now in our present day and time. Um, what I just made reference to right now is how this symbol began and how it was passed to every single ancient culture in our past. Um, but on a more uh, modern and uh, recent historical context, this symbol uh, throughout history has continued to evolve and was popularized, I believe, in um, 1714 by a Gottfried Wilhelm as, um, as as the study of the uh, what is it the study of the first principle to metaphysics. Um, this symbol was used to describe. Um, uh, uh, it was used by. It, 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 it has been associated and has and it has been associated and uh, and affiliated and known to be used um, by, agnostic, by, by agnosticism who embrace the symbol as their supreme being. It is, it's the same symbol that, that these entities move before they shift into a UFO craft. It's the same symbol that they use um, to, to, uh, uh, to move on, on a molecular level because when we see um, these entities moving and shifting to the sky, like I said, George, I've had encounters with these entities and and, and I always go back to my first encounter, which was the most intense one that has made an impact in, in my mind. And um, I always draw information and conclusions from this encounter. And when, what, 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 one of the questions that I ask myself, now you guys have to remember that I'm making reference to this particular symbol. Hold on for a second, Jesse. We'll pick that up and take final calls with you in just a moment on Coast to Coast AM. And welcome back, George Norrie, our final segment with Jesse Alberto as we are talking about fallen angels. How many people, Jesse, are in that camp that believe that these extraterrestrials might be fallen angels? What do you think? Well, um, I believe that there's there's a very small percentage because even um, within you know within the confines of the church, I'm telling you that the reason the reason um, I make reference to this and, and lean extremely towards this t towards this direction, George, is because I've had encounters with them and and um, and I've actually uh, it came to a point where um, there was five of them who came in through the ceiling on my roof um, and uh, attempted to take me. And at that time, I wasn't living I wasn't living for God. 
And um, at that moment, they grabbed me by the ankles and they were dragging me. And um, I cried out to God and I said, please don't let them take me. And if you if you don't let them take me, um, I promise that I will serve you. I, I had no clue that 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 that, that um, incident, that that event would lead me to where I'm at right here um, doing documentaries with Steve Quell and even here um, making this this presentation and doing this interview with you, George. But um, to answer your question, even within um, it, it, it's becoming more popular now that, you know, that that, that the topic continues to grow intensively um and and people are are and they are embracing it but there's a small there's a I, I, in in my estimation i believe that there's 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 a very small remnant of 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 uh people who truly do believe that this is the situation that's happening and and that um that these entities that we're dealing with um these entities that have uh piqued the interest and 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 have captivated the hearts and minds of millions and um, by metamorphosizing and resurfacing as in the days of old and cleverly merging themselves like subatomic particles into the very nucleus of our culture, making themselves the center of our everyday life through the witchcrafts and the operations that they run um, and the frequencies that these are the fallen angels. And there, there will come a time where, where only, only by evoking and calling out on the name of Jesus, will we be able to be protected from any of this? My, and, and I would encourage people to seek out God honestly, because um, I mean, it doesn't take. We don't have to take a, a, a. I mean, we don't have to look far to see and to truly understand that things are extremely, you know, getting out of control from every area, every direction. And these these and I, I do believe that 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 we are getting to the point where they will um, be walking amongst us. Um, I live off I live off of uh, the coast of Baja here, and I see them come out of the water um, nightly, um, continuously. Um, they 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 have this predilection towards the water, and I've always asked myself, what is it that is in the water? That these entities um, gravitate towards to that they that they must be using um, to 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 push forward um, their agenda and their plans, and you know so mm. so um, so I, I you know I've started researching you know the essence of of what you know it's not it doesn't take a physicist to figure this out, George, but um, when. You know, I, when we take a look at everything that's created around us, um, um, at one point or another, everything that alive that that is alive um, is alive through uh, water or oxygen, and water is made through uh, a water. The water molecule is made through the atom, which is two hydrogen and um, one oxygen. But it's the hydrogen atom that's more. Um, uh, that, that I believe is more utilized, um, even making reference to, 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 to this recipe with, uh, with how the science, how the scientists identify this is they even themselves identify the hydrogen atom as a portal from where nothingness becomes and manifests into something. And like I've mentioned earlier, um, it, 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 in order for these entities to operate within our proximity, in order for them to enter from the quantum realm, which is the invisible realm that even the scientists don't understand, and 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 enter into our four-dimensional realm, which is space and time, they need to utilize the elements in order for them to move within this realm. And I believe that they're that they're utilizing the hydrogen atom in order for them to materialize in some type of way. Now, if we take a look at, at, at how the Bible um, has made reference to, to this and the way that it describes them, th these entities are capable, not even only through the Bible, but through uh, the Greek, the Roman, the Aztec pantheon. These, these entities are able, have, it has been known that they're able to, to walk
walk in a corporal way, meaning um, as human beings or even uh, theriomorphic beings that are written on the, on the walls and on the temples of, of, of um, megalithic. Well, they could be walking oh, among. They could be walking among us. Let's go to final calls. First time caller, Lisa in Chicago. Hi, Lisa. Go ahead. Hi. Um, you mentioned two sites, uh, Chupicuaro and Tulum. The artifacts that you keep referring to, which site are they from? Okay, I have um, I have the artifacts are from two different places. There's in Tulum, we couldn't get in right there. There, um, we had no access. I had no access in that area. But it's in Tula, which is Adeyende, and um, and and also in Chupicuaro, Guanajuato, which is connected to Acambaro, Guanajuato. But further down, extending probably about a couple hundred miles, give or take, you know, um, a few miles, uh, it's in Lago de Cuitzeo. So the artifacts that, that, that I'm presenting to the people as evidence um, come from Lago de Cuitzeo and Tula Allende. Let's go to Jose in Louisiana, wildcard line. Hi, Jose. Go ahead. Yes, sir. How are you doing? Um, I've been a Christian for about 11 years now, and I've had some, you know, just odd experiences with, you know, the, the things you guys are talking about. And I really don't know who to talk to without coming off as crazy. Or and I, I truly do believe, you know, these aliens are demons. But uh, how would I go about, you know, sharing my story to other believers about things that I've experienced? What do you recommend, uh, Jesse, for somebody who? believes what you do and wants to talk to people about it oh um, my i would recommend that you don't talk to people about it for the simple fact that that first well first and foremost i i would suggest that that you seek out god and that you read that you read the bible every day there's 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 a plethora of examples in the bible of how it is that we can deal um with these entities and 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 some are are evident and some are not so evident but the more that i've learned is the more that i've learned by sitting in god's presence is the more that um i have developed and been able to deal with these types of attacks um you you can't even even the church is not ready for this they don't accept this because uh the church allows um uh the, the culture to dictate what it is and how they perceive the reality in which we live in so um, I, my my, uh, my advice to you would be that that um, and don't 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 try to you know strike a conversation with anybody about this unless they would ask you about it. Like when I know a lot, and I but in my mind I I feel like I don't know enough, and and I also feel that I need to learn more so that I could be able to help people in times of need, and those times are coming. But my advice. To you, as I said once again, is is just to seek the presence of God and and don't try to connect with people or anybody. If you're gonna, if you're looking for somewhere to vent, vent, vent to the Lord. Read your Bible. That's the only place that you're gonna gain power. I for myself, I myself for years kept this, you know, to myself because I mean, who can you really actually talk to about? And the only reason I'm able to, um, you know, talk about it now is because it's blowing up at the seams. But yeah, um, you know, just take it to God, take it to God and, and and believe that he will bring you to a place where he will show you with whatever it is that he reveals to you what to do with this information. East of the Rockies, Katie's with us in Pennsylvania. Hi, Katie. Hi. Um, I have a question. For All right. History. Yes, these guys used to be up in heaven and they were happy, right? Well, they've had a long time to get angry for the sensible fact that they didn't get what they expected. What if he took these bad guys to places like Hershey Park or Disney and showed them happy again? Do you think they could make a difference? No. And the question basically was, Jesse, how do you make these fallen angels happy again? Uh, there, there, they, there's no redemption for these entities. Um, there's an, there's an extra, there's an extra biblical text that. That, that, that's named that's called the, uh, the book of job and and this this uh book or the first book of job not the second or the third um but this book is it, it gives us information that collaborates with the genesis chapter 6 narrative and many other things and and um this book reveals to us that 
um, that these angels, uh, excuse me, the, the book of Enoch, I'm sorry, the first book of Enoch, not the second, not the second or the third, but um, that these angels came to this individual man of God, Enoch, and um, they asked him to intercede to God for them um, for forgiveness. And uh, uh, Enoch went into the presence of God and related the message on behalf of these angels. And God said, God's response to Enoch was, there is no redemption for them. And the reason why I believe that they have no redemption and, and they are destined to eternal damnation and judgment on the day of the Lord is because um, they have known God in a way that, that, that any, in a way that no human here on earth has known God. And they know the mysteries and the secrets to the universe. And because um, they were created and had stood in the presence of God and still decided to move forward with their plan and their agenda to rebel against God, therefore, thereby they have no redemption. And this is a call that, that, that is written and known, made by God himself and our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's go to Joe in Monterey, California. Hey, Joseph, go ahead. Thank you for taking my call, George. Sure thing, Joe. Uh, Jesse, you have a lot of courage, and you have learned so much, and God bless you. You have angels to protect you. Thank yes, you. The war has already begun. Uh, this, this, this Armageddon has begun, and this war against extraterrestrial has also begun. Those artifacts... Those artifacts has a certain type of energy. You can't, it, can a person really leave a country with, with uh, national treasure? Because artifacts are considered national treasure. I don't think they were stolen. I think they were confiscated. I think they're going to be used for various reasons. Yeah, they were confiscated. This individual, well, you know, this individual who I, who I handed him off to, is, he's a very well-known, very popular in the U.S., and and um, he 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 does fall in and take orders from from um, from the draconian um, reptilian overrulers um, who are pushing forward you know their agendas and um, and the reason why they're not the reason why they're not at this point where we're at right now why they're not recognized is um, why they're not being acknowledged which I believe they soon will be is simply because it it. It changes everything that they have said to us in regards to our history, and not only that, but people will people will begin to um, learn for themselves and investigate, and 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 the more that people search for the truth, the the, the truth needs to be sought out, and when you search for the truth, you will find the truth, you know, and that truth is found within within the pages of the Bible, and and that's why these these artifacts are not being acknowledged, because the last thing they want is for anybody to find freedom and deliverance through the words and the promises and the power that comes with this book, which is the Holy Bible. Jesse, what's the name of the documentary that you and Steve are working on? The name of the documentary that will be released soon is um, uh, Gen 6 Expeditions in Mexico. And uh, this this documentary consists of um, uh, many years of, of methodical research and preparation, um, but also uh, two different archaeological dig sites. Like I said, there's there's more than two dig sites here in Mexico, George. But uh, uh, when me and Steve were were making preparations to do something new. Um, I thought that we were going to hit another uh, another dig site, another archaeological site in Mexico, um, um, apart from the ones that we have already uh, documented. But uh, we we believe that that it would be since we've had um, since we've had and been blessed with the with the ability to succeed in pushing these for, and, and pushing these projects forward. Uh, uh, Steve decided that that we should try our our um, our well being. And, and, and the goodness of, of, of the grace that God is showing us in other places around the world. Will you keep up doing the good work, my friend? Jesse Alberto works with our friend Steve Quayle. For Dan Galanti, Tom Danheiser, Lisa Lyon, Lux Lonehood, Sean Ladasour, Stephanie Smith, Chris Burroughs, Tim Benal, George Knapp, and Ian Punnett, I'm George Norris, somewhere out there on Coast to Coast AM. We'll see you on our next edition. Until then.
Be safe, everyone.